In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make any minigame plugin, like the ones you might have seen on Hypixel or Mindplex, you know, the big servers out there, in just two easy steps. So we're gonna take your minigame coding knowledge and take it from just kind of throwing things at a wall and seeing if they stick, to a very clear and thought out process that makes it easy to work on your game mode uh, and, and test it and get it done. So let's jump right in. Before this video gets started, I just wanted to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already and turn on the bell notification to see more videos like this one. If you have specific coding questions or want to chat with me or request videos, please join our community Discord server where that type of conversation can take place. If you're watching this the day it comes out on September 5th, 2020, we're having a live stream tomorrow at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific and 4 p.m. Eastern, where I'm going to try and make a spleef plugin in less than three hours. So if you're interested in that kind of content, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on that action. With that, let's jump right into the video. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, I've created a survival games plugin with almost no functionality in it, but I'm using some of my techniques uh, in order to start building a solid foundation to work off of. So you'll see we're in the uh, base class of our plugin here. We have this thing called a game manager. Uh, we register this event, we create a command, and then on disable, we call this cleanup function. So let's jump right in. What is a game manager? Let's open that up. The game manager stores different pieces of state for our game. And so I've got this thing called a game state, which you might have used or seen or you know done something like this before. Uh, it's just an enum with some different states in it. This just tells our plugin what portion of the game are, we're in right now. So are we in lobby? Are we voting? Are we active? Are we in deathmatch? Is the game over? Are we resetting the server? Those types of things, which allow us to do different actions based on what's going on. So let's close out of that and go back into game manager. You can notice I have this public property for game state and it's set to lobby by default. Uh, let's focus on this for a second. So. Here's something that I've seen uh, and I've done actually back when I started making plugins and writing code. Let's open up our start command and notice I've got this game manager instance, which is awesome. And I'm accessing game state and setting it to starting whenever this command is run. So this command is just slash start. And from here I've, I've uh, made some code, which is just some comments for the sake of this example, where this is where we'd write this, these pieces of functionality. So we'd start our countdown task, we'd teleport players, clear their inventories, you know, that sort of thing. And we would do that all inside of the start command. This is not exactly the best practice because here's what happens. Let's say we want to start the command using uh, an inventory item, right? So every admin who joins will get a uh, you know redstone dust or something, and they can click on that to start the game. Well, now you have to take this code and you have to paste it. And from there, let's say we want to do something else with this and we want to start the game from somewhere else and so on. And you can see every single time we want to start the game, we have to copy and paste this code. And now what happens if when we clear inventories, we forget armor? Well, now we have to go and say uh, and armor right there. And let's paste that down. And let's say we forget that we start the game from here. And there we go. So everything works except right here. So you see, when we copy and paste code like this, we're going to introduce bugs and inconsistencies into our plugin. The better way to do this would be, go, would be to go to Game Manager here and create a function called set state or set game state. This takes in a new game state property, which is what the new game state will be. It sets it right here. We can change this to private now. We'll ignore that for a moment. And then inside of set game state, we can switch on the new state here and do different actions based on what's going on. So let's say we switch to active. And we'll say, we'll broadcast a message that says active here. Or let's say we switch to starting. I know those are out of order, but that's okay. We'll say starting. And so now we can go back into start command and get rid of all this code or copy that for a moment. And then we can just say set state to be starting. Back inside of our starting method here, we can then take all of our code and paste it right there. And so now you see we've taken this, you know, super duplicated piece of code and put it in one spot. And so now whenever we have this set of code to start the game, we just replace it with this one line and it starts the game for us automatically. This also can prevent inconsistency. Let's say we're, st we're uh, at in an active game and we switch to starting for some reason. That doesn't make sense. And so we can do certain checks like saying if the current game state, whoops, we'll go up at the top here before we change the variable. 
if the current game state is active and the new game state oops and the new game state is starting well this doesn't make sense you can't be in an active game and then start the game that doesn't make any sense at all and so we can do these types of checks in one spot as well so it helps uh, basically future proof and lay a solid foundation for your code so you don't run into these types of issues so that is my first um, part of this section here taking our game state and putting it all in one consistent place so that when we change the state of our game uh, everything is consistent we change or we, we use one line of code to change our state and everything happens as expected in this one class here so now I'd like to talk about this listener let's say we want to make sure that players can't break blocks that they're not supposed to well I've created a reference to game manager here and game manager has this thing called the block manager so if we go back into game manager you'll notice we have this property here and if we go down we have this getter for it and so that just returns our current instance of block manager if we open that up you see we have a reference to game manager and you see we have this allowed to break set along with this function called can break and it, we accept the block so this allows us to check if a player is allowed to be able to break a certain type of block like leaves or grass that's pretty common in survival games plugins and so all we have to do to allow a new um, new item here, we just do that. And we add the new material we'd like to, um, whoops. We can add the new material we'd like to allow a break for. And we could, of course, read this from a configuration file. This is just very bare bones to show how this works. Then inside of this, this function here, instead of checking all these materials manually, you just ask of this one function on block manager, which handles all sorts of transactions about blocks. And we ask it, hey, can we break this block? And if we can't, we're gonna cancel the event and get out of here. And this keeps our function nice and short. If we break down functionality into concrete pieces like this, it makes our lives super, super simple when adding more functionality. We can do the same thing with a player manager. So let's say player manager. And then of course we'll get a, a reference to game manager here just in case we need it in the future. We'll make the constructor. So inside of this new player manager, I've got these two functions called give kits and give kit to a specific player. Inside of give kits, I'm going to get every single online player. And you know what, first let's actually filter this out. So we'll say, whoops, filter. And we're gonna make sure that everyone's game mode in this list here that we're gonna loop over is survival. And if that's the case, then we're going to say give kit to that player. So now when we call give kits, it's going to give a kit to every single player in survival. And so maybe this involves giving them, uh, getting their inventory, adding a new, oops, new item stack with a wooden sword. There we go. So now when we call this give kits function, everyone in survival will be given a wooden sword. So if we go into game manager, well, right here where we have the block manager class, we'll just do the same thing with player manager. And we'll also create inside of our game manager initializer here, our, our constructor, we'll just create a new player manager object. Oops, and I need to actually name that correctly and make these final as well, because they don't ever change. We'll make a get player manager function in case we need it. And then inside of uh, starting, we will uh, go down here. And we'll say get player manager dot give kits and this is going to give kits to every single player when the game starts or when the game is about to be starting of course so let's actually run our project and see what's going on and walk through the code here so before we actually test our plugin let's walk through what we expect to happen we create a new game manager which just does its basic setup creates a player manager and a block manager and lets those classes do their own thing we register our block break listener and pass it our game manager. And then we register our start command and we pass it our game manager as well. If we break a block, that block uh, queries the block manager and asks that, hey, can we break this block? If not, we cancel, we don't allow that to happen. And remember uh, both types of grass, tall and short grass, along with uh, oak leaves, those are the only three blocks allowed to be broken. So we'll keep that in mind as we go test. And instead of our start command, we are just setting the game state to starting, which if we open that up, you see it does 
uh, this. It's broadcast starting and it gives everyone on the server a kit. So here's Minecraft. If we break the grass, you see it works just fine. Perfect. If we even go over here and break the oak leaves, we're good to go. But if we try and punch down the tree, you'll notice that it actually gets canceled. So that's our block manager doing its job. And remember, we're putting these pieces of functionality in dedicated classes, so if there's a problem with something, we know exactly where to look, and we don't have to spend forever diagnosing problems. That's part of the benefit of how this structure works. Let's look at our start command. And look at that, we see starting, we have a wooden sword, and that's that. If we run it again, um, you see uh, we keep getting wooden swords because there's never anything about preventing a, a game state change to the existing state. Uh, this is something that can be easily fixed. We'll say if this dot game state is equal to the current state, we're just going to return and, and do nothing. Um, and that would fix the problem we just experienced there. But you see, it's super easy to add pieces of functionality. Let's go ahead and make a task system. So we're going to make a tasks package with a starting or game start countdown task. So this task in here is what's going to uh, start our game essentially for us. So we'll make this extend a bucket runnable, implement all of our basic methods here, and we'll create a game manager because we need to be able to change the state once the timer is done. We'll just create that right there. Now we can create a private int called time left. We'll set that equal to 30. We could obviously uh, ask Game Manager to get us a time to start with and that sort of thing in case we wanted to make that a config option. And we'll say time left minus minus. So we're going to subtract one every time this runs. If time left is now less than or equal to zero, then we know we need to cancel this task and then set the state to active and return out of this function or that if branch right there. Otherwise, if we're still ticking, then we could say bucket.broadcast message time left until game starts. Just like that. So now that we've created our game start countdown task, we'll head to game manager and create an instance of this here. Boom, or a variable for it. And inside of starting, we're going to set that variable equal to a new task. And then we can just say run task timer. We'll pass it our plugin. We'll say run it every second there. Uh, of course, this uses ticks, so 20 uh, ticks is one second. And there we go. Inside of active, we'll say if this dot game uh, start counter task is not null, then we're going to cancel it if that's the case. And then we switch to active and give people kits. Uh, before we test this, I'll just set time left to be like 10 seconds here um, and just make sure that um, we don't continuously uh, have to wait 30 seconds to test this functionality here. Perfect. So we've got our plugin compiled. Just basic stuff. We'll go copy this into our server here. Oh, maybe it didn't copy. Copy, there it is. And we'll paste, replace, and normal stuff there. We will reload. And there we go. Our plugin is still active. If we start, you'll notice we start getting our timer. So we go 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and then 1. And then active. We get our wood sword. We can start killing. So here's the zombie. Great. And there we go. We've won the Hunger Games, guys. So super simple. You see we've created this task. This task will start our game uh, by setting our, our state to active uh, when its own timer runs out. So each state uh, and each task only knows exactly what information it needs to know. And it can query other uh, managers or the classes to figure out other information that it might need down the line. Super simple. And so this format really, really helps uh, make things super easy to understand. Anyone, if they want to understand your plugin, can basically open up Game Manager, look inside of Set Game State, and figure out what goes on during these different states. They also then can look at different listeners and figure out what happens when different Minecraft events happen. And those two things combined basically make up your entire plugin. Super simple. So I hope you enjoyed this introduction to how 
Uh, minigame plugins can function. Uh, this is a pattern that I've used a few times over and it works pretty well. If you have any issues or questions about this, please join our community Discord server and I'll do my best to help answer them. Um, this is just something I've come up with um, over the past few years of working on plugins and it's not anything magic. It doesn't definitely has its problems. Um, you can get really, really big game manager class if, classes if you don't really um, focus on keeping that size down. So that's just things to, to keep in mind. Make sure you isolate uh, individual pieces of functionality. Uh, 100 lines or less is a good target for a file, uh, generally speaking, so that you can open up a file and just scroll through it within a few seconds and know exactly what it does. So that's it for this video. If you have video suggestions, either comment them down below or leave them in our community Discord. If you like the video, make sure to leave a like. And if you wanna see more content like this, subscribe and ring the notification bell so you know exactly when a new video it goes live. Also, again, if you're watching this video when it comes out on September 5th of 2020, then I'm streaming live on YouTube tomorrow on Sunday the 6th at 1 p.m. Pacific or 4 p.m. Eastern. We're going to make a spleef plugin using some of these techniques so you can actually follow along as we make a real plugin. Uh, once that stream's done, I will leave the link to that stream in the video description of this video. So if you want a three hour or more, depending on how it goes, a guide on how to actually make a working plugin um, using these patterns, uh, that will be a great place to start. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.